In our last video, we did kind of a quick overview of the things that we can put inside of XML files, and we just kind of looked at the syntax of them. We built a file like this. We talked about the fact that we have tags, and they build elements, and we have special characters in here. Now it would be nice to actually utilize this format for something that would be part of a real problem. So we're going to close out that file. And I have here a file called grades.txt. Now this would be a standard text file representation for grades for a particular class. So I have the name of the class at the top, and then I have information below this. Now just looking at this, it's not 100% clear what this information is. And that's one of the big advantages of the XML format is the fact that it is self-documenting. Well, I happen to know this three here is the number of students. I have three students in this file. Each one has a name. Then I have three separate lines for each student that represent different sets of grades. So maybe this is quizzes, assignments, tests or test assignments. But one, once again, by looking at this, I don't know. I don't know which of these numbers are what because it doesn't really tell me. I'd have to actually go look in the code to figure out what the meaning of these things was. Also, it turns out that when I'm grading assignments, I want to put comments on them. Okay? I might do that for quizzes and tests too, but definitely for assignments, I want to be able to give students feedback on the code that they've submitted. And it's not clear how I would do this for this flat text file. So for example, if this second line here was assignments, how am I going to put separate comments on each of these? And we could do it. We could come up with a format. But then the format of this file starts to get more and more complex and challenging. Instead, we could make this file be an XML file. So we'll put an outer tag. I'm going to call it gradebook around all of our data. Inside of here, I want to have the course name. I'll go with title. And sure, we'll just say CS1. Oops. Now already at this point, the use of XML is making it clear that this has a particular meaning to it. Whereas for this file, okay, it said CS1. What does that mean? It's not as clear. For this file, because it's inside of an element called title, we know that, that that's what we're talking about. In fact, let's, I'm going to go to a camel case course name because I think that's even more invocative of, a, of the image that I want you to have. And now I want to have, for each student, I want an element. Okay, I need to specify their name. And I'm going to actually break their name into parts. As opposed to just putting a whole bunch of, you know, a full name on a single line. And then I'm going to close off that element. The grades are actually going to go inside of here. So for example, let's say that the line that has three numbers on it is quizzes. So our first quiz, and this is one of those situations where I could represent this as an attribute. And in fact, that's, go, that's what I'll go ahead and do here because it will make the idea of putting a text uh, comment on this perhaps uh, a bit easier. So the grade for the student on the first quiz was an 88. And I don't have any other information for that quiz. So we can just close that off. The other two quizzes for this student were a 73 and a 95. Once again, this says, because it says quiz here and grade, we know what these numbers are. Whereas in this file, yes, it was a shorter file 
but they were just kind of magic numbers unless you knew something about it. So an assignment grade, I had an 82. I don't know what type of comments I might put here, but sure. There we go. The idea here is that the contents of assignment is the comment that I gave to a student on their assignment. Okay, I'd probably even put punctuation on this as well. I can put pretty much whatever uh, text I want inside of there. Actually, one thing is the single quote really should be written as the special character uh, apos for apostrophe. Okay, and our last line, well, if we already have quiz and assignment, this would be a test grade. Though, quite honestly, the test grade should probably be one of the lower numbers. And then I would do the same type of thing for Jane Doe and Bob Builder. So we copy that, we could paste it. Jane had grades of 95, 84, and 90 for the quizzes, assignments of 84 and 93 and a test grade of 100 and then Bob had grades of 66, 93, 82, the assignments I'm actually going to put no comment for these and instead of making them empty elements I'll just have a, a begin and an end with nothing in the middle Okay, so there is a sample XML file that this would convert into. Yes, it is a lot longer than XML, but it actually has more power because I couldn't put these comments over here and putting them in here would have required this file to get longer. Uh, in fact, with the XML, I could have put comments on any of these grades and it would have been very easy to do. Um, and it's also more documenting. Okay, we know that these are quiz grades, we know that these are assignments grades, and this is a test grade, whereas over here we would have had to just kind of guess uh, at those things. So that is a sample XML file that kind of has meaning to it, and hopefully that helps you to see some of the advantages of how we might transfer these things over. One other thing that wasn't mentioned is you can actually put comments, as in parts of XML that aren't really used by the computer, just like you can put them in a programming language, by using, it's a less than, bang, hyphen, hyphen, grades, oh, I hit I for in, insert, for a class. Okay, so you can put in things that are just intended for the human inside of the less than exclamation point hyphen hyphen and hyphen hyphen greater than uh, in addition to all of the other stuff that we have in here that is proper elements and data that is going to be read by the computer.